The rate determining step of the SN1 reaction is the leaving group just leaving to produce a carbocation. This step is always uphill. It has a small KEQ and a positive delta G naught. Since the activation energy barrier is related to the stability of the carbocation, the rate of the SN1 reaction is largely governed by the stability of the carbocation. More stable carbocations are easier to form, so form more rapidly. The less stable the carbocation, the more difficult it is to form, the slower the SN1 reaction. So to understand carbocation stability, we need to think about the relevant frontier molecular orbital. By definition, a carbocation has an empty p orbital as its LUMO. It's an excellent electrophile and behaves by accepting electrons. The lower in energy that p orbital, the hungrier it is for electrons, the less stable the carbocation. So anything that provides even the tiniest bit of electron density to that empty p orbital helps to stabilize the carbocation. The simplest carbocation, CH3+, will be our baseline. It has nothing stabilizing its empty p orbital at all, so it's really very unstable. If we introduce a simple alkyl group on one side, we introduce a pair of electrons in this sigma bonding orbital that aligns sort of parallel with the empty p orbital. They sort of rub shoulders. This effect helps to satiate the empty p orbital, but only by a small amount, because the sigma bonding orbital is quite comfortable as it is. It doesn't share its electrons well. This quite weak effect of a sigma bonding orbital partially sharing its electron density with an adjacent empty orbital is called hyperconjugation. The more of it that can occur, that is, the more sigma bonds that are adjacent to a carbocation's empty p orbital, the more satisfied that p orbital is and the more stable the carbocation. This means that the methyl carbocation is really very unstable. Primo, primary carbocations are only slightly more stable, secondary carbocations are more stable yet, and tertiary carbocations are relatively stable. They're the easiest to form of any of these types of carbocations. Hyperconjugation can occur with any sigma bonds. It doesn't have to be CH bonds. CC bonds and other types of sigma bonds can do it too. This means that tertiary alkyl halides can undergo SN1 reactions relatively easily. Secondary alkyl halides can undergo SN1 reactions as well, but they're much slower. And primary and methyl halides don't generally undergo SN1 reactions at all. One other factor can stabilize carbocations, and much more effectively than hyperconjugation can. That's resonance. If a carbocation is adjacent to a pi bond, then that positive charge can be delocalized, spread over several atoms, and this makes the carbocation much more stable than it otherwise would be. This means that allylic and benzylic halides, those on the sp3 carbons adjacent to alkenes or benzene rings, are especially susceptible to SN1 substitutions. If and when the leaving group just leaves, the resulting carbocation is stabilized by resonance. In the case of allylic leaving groups, this means that the positive charge is spread over two carbons. And in the case of benzylic leaving groups, it's spread out over four carbons. This stabilization is substantial enough that primary alkyl halides, which don't 
normally undergo SN1 reactions can undergo SN1 reactions if they're allylic or benzylic.